Hi there guys, Barry from Copper vs Glass here and today we're going to be doing the first part of a multi-part video series on Plex. Now just very briefly to go into what Plex is, Plex is essentially an app that allows you to stream and deliver media such as videos and music and photos to a screen that you may have. Now that may be a phone, it may be a computer, or it may even be your TV. Um, in this first video we're going to be covering setup and then in subsequent videos we're going to be doing how you can add media to it and how you can actually play it using different various ways. I'm going to be showing you my setup and how I use Plex and I can show you some different options as well that you may have. So let's get into it and let's find out how we set up Plex. So guys, firstly what I'm going to be doing is just taking you through my setup and how I actually use uh, my Plex. Uh, now, first of all with Plex you need to have somewhere to store your media. Uh, this can be a hard drive, it can be an external NAS drive like I'm using. Uh, and as you can see down the far left hand corner, that's my NAS drive, that is a network attached storage drive. Um, attached to my router, it's a Synology, uh, and I'll put the link into the one that I've got down in the description below. That's connected via an Ethernet cable to my router, which is just sat next to the left hand speaker just there. That's connected via Ethernet to get the best speed. Then I've got my computer. Now, in this case, I'm going to be using my computer as the distribution server for the media. That means that all the media is going to be running through the Mac uh, to actually be transcoded and distributed to wherever it's going to be playing. Then I've got my TV. Now you can't actually see it because it's on the back, but on the back I've actually got a Chromecast plugged in, which is of course connected to my router via the Wi-Fi. Now just to explain the flow of traffic and media that we're going to be looking at here, we're going to be using the media server to stream the data from the Synology drive through the router, through the computer, which is going to do any transcoding and understanding of the media that it needs to, and then subsequently via Wi-Fi again to the Chromecast that's connected to the TV. Now in this case I could use my phone for example with the Plex app to control the media through the Mac using the Plex server and I could actually just use my phone to throw the media from the Synology drive onto the Chromecast. It does sound a little bit complicated but uh, we're going to go ahead and have a look at how we actually set everything up from scratch uh, and how we sign up and start using Plex. So let's get started. So to sign up to Plex and get started, first of all we have to go to their website and you can find it at plex.tv. Now as we scroll down the web page, it's just going to give you a really good idea about what Plex is. First of all, you can see that it works on tons of different devices including Windows, Apple, Android, Amazon TV, Chromecast, Roku and so on. We're going to be using it on the Mac of course, um, so we'll look at that in a second. Next you can see that it's mentioning about the server application because that's pretty much the heart of the Plex experience. Next it's going to take us into a really good diagram of what Plex is and what we need to do to set it up. So we're going to need to sign up for an account, download the server application and then after that we can download device applications to view our content. And then of course there's a Plex Pass uh, option which is a paid membership to Plex services. What we're going to do is we're going to click the sign up button and we're going to enter some credentials to sign up to an account. Once we've done this we just click sign up and we follow the steps on the next page. It's going to of course offer this the option of Plex Pass which is a paid membership that offers you various different features but I just use the free version because I don't really uh, feel the need to take any advantage of the other features it offers. So we're going to click no thanks. Then it's going to take us back to the main Plex screen. Now what we need to do is we need to download the server application which is going to be able to organize and distribute our media. On the downloads page we'll find the media server app at the top followed by application downloads below. In this case we're going to click computer but you can see there is a NAS option here because in some cases NAS drives can actually have the server app installed on them so that you don't have to have your computer running to view your media. In this case we'll click on computer and we're going to choose Mac of course and we're going to click the download option. This is going to start downloading the server application. It's about 70 megs in size so give it a second and it will download the application to your computer. Once the application is finished downloading we'll go to our desktop where this is downloaded to and we'll open it up. As you can see on the Mac it simply puts the application on the desktop. What we need to do however is drag this to our application folder on the Mac. Now that it's in our application folder, we can delete the installer.zip that we downloaded earlier. We will now launch the media application and click OK to any warnings that come up. 
You can see at the top it's starting the Plex server application in the toolbar. This will then open up the web browser of default that you've set, in this case mine's Chrome. It's going to ask you to log into your Plex account, in this case we'll put in the details we entered earlier. Now that we've signed in we have to click agree to the terms and conditions to continue. Now this is going to start up the Plex server application. Mine took a while and I actually had to refresh the web browser to get this to continue properly but I do suggest leaving it at least a few minutes just to make sure. Once the page has been refreshed or completed properly you should see a page similar to this starting the setup process. The first thing it's going to do is ask us to enter a name for our server. In this case I'm going to enter my Plex server as the name. I'm going to keep connector Plex ticked as it will allow me to access my media outside of the home. It's then going to ask us to add a library to our Plex server so it can organise our media. In this case we're going to choose movies first. It will give us an option to name the repository, in this case I'll just leave it as movies. I'm going to click add a folder. I'm going to then search on my location for where my movies folder is located. In this case it's on my network connected Synology. I select my movie folder and click add. Once I've got the destination inputted I can then click on the advanced tab. In this case I'm just going to make sure that the Plex agent is set to the movie database. This is just simply so that I can ensure that Plex gets the right information for my media. I'm going to click add library again and in this case I'm going to choose TV shows. Again I can name the repository and then I'm going to click add folder. I'm then going to search on my Synology for my TV shows folder and click add. I'm going to click advanced just to check the agent that's involved and in this case it's a TV database and then I click add library. So you now see that I have a movie and a TV shows a library added to my Plex server and I click next. It's then going to ask us if we want to install any channels. This is simply a way of getting some online content onto your Plex server such as BBC iPlayer, Revision 3 or Twit Media. It will then give us an option to click on Plex Pass which is the pay subscription if we want to but in this case I'm going to say no and that's my server pretty much set up. You'll be then taken to a page that looks like this and it will look very busy down the bottom as Plex is now going through all of my media and matching it with online databases and giving it its own metadata. This is going to title it, description it and add all the information you'll need to make it look nice and good. I'm going to go into the settings just to check a couple of things first before we move on to the next stage. In this case I'm going to jump straight into the server tab on the top right. I'm going to make sure my server is named correctly first, then I'm going to click connect and sign in. This is just to simply ensure that my server is signed in properly to my account which again will allow me to access my server outside the house, uh, outside of my home network as long as the server is on and in this case as long as my computer is on. Once signed in I'm going to go down to the next stage which is agents. To explain what agents are, agents are simply a way of linking to online repositories of information. In this case there are categories for movies, TV shows, artists, albums and photos. Under the movies heading you're going to have personal media, freebase and the movie database. I suggest moving in the freebase and the movie database those preferences to the top. This is simply to ensure that Plex matches correctly your media. I have found that sometimes if you leave local media assets at the top for example it doesn't exactly match it correctly. There are some other options you can tick in the advanced settings saying uh, include adult content for titling for example and location setting which allows you to choose the location where your media is from and it will date it appropriately such as release date. There are some other settings here which we're just going to go through and you can feel free to explore these yourself on your Plex server. If I click on the library tab the only one I'm going to tick in here is update my library automatically and save changes. This is to ensure that every time my library changes such as adding or removing media my Plex server will adjust itself accordingly. With the transcoder I'm going to leave this on automatic. This is simply to say that if I stream my media outside of the house over a cellular network for example then it's going to adjust the quality appropriately based on my speed and the device I'm using it on. 
If we click on the activity tab at the top we can see everything our Plex server is doing and in this case it's very busy initially because it's matching all of our media with those online databases we specified earlier. So that's pretty much it for this Plex project tutorial on setting up the Plex server. In our next video we're going to be looking at how you can use Plex on your TV, your phone and indeed your computer. This is Barry from Coffee vs Glass and I'll check you guys in the next one.